You may overly focus on self-development workshops and activities to the expense of practical daily needs. Hashtag feeling attacked. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Introverted intuiting has been called the most obscure and the least practically useful of the eight Jungian functions. But at the same time, we hear a lot of messages of trust yourself, listen to your gut, follow your intuition. So I thought in this video, I'd like to share some descriptions of what introverted intuiting is, what happens when you overuse it, and how you can practice getting better at using your introverted intuition, no matter where it might be in your type code. Introverted intuition is going to be dominant for INTJs and INFJs and is going to be in the auxiliary position for ENTJs and ENFJs. So if you have an NJ in your type, introverted intuiting is going to be up there and you probably have good conscious access to it. So let's start off with some descriptions. I'm going to be reading from a couple of books again. First off, we have Jung's Function Attitudes Explained. Oh, is that out of focus? By Dick Thompson, Henry Thompson, PhD. And he calls it virtuality. He starts off by describing how introverted intuiting is very much an influx of images. Extroverted intuiting might be a little more words and sentences or articulated thoughts and patterns, but introverted intuiting is very much indescribable images that to be shared must be converted into a verbal or visual form and they may not make sense at first. Many of these introverted intuitive images that we are flooded with have some archetypal character, they are quite symbolic, so the meaning of them may not be immediately apparent and that is one of the reasons why it's been described as being quite obscure. But it's also an advantage because it really allows the person to put their own interpretation on it. From your own experience, five people look at a picture and have five different experiences, right? He continues describing introverted intuiting in how it shows up in great visionary leaders. Introverted intuiting is very future oriented and very much about possibilities. Things that don't yet exist, they exist in your mind. It may come from your own subconscious, it might come from the collective unconscious. And the examples that Dick gives are Mahatma Gandhi, Dwight Eisenhower, I would say probably someone like Steve Jobs would also fit the bill. So basically people who have this huge vision of something that absolutely does not exist yet, but they're working towards it and making it a reality. He refers to it as multidimensional visualizations that can be navigated and deliberately manipulated. The world of imagination for someone with introverted intuiting is super rich and they can go in and play with it. It's not just an image that shows up and they don't know what to do with it. It's an image that shows up and they are navigating around it. They're engaging with it. They're connecting it with other ideas. People who have introverted intuiting high up in their function stack are able to flow around and swim around in the sea of unconscious imagery. And then he goes on, the only limitation is an inability to describe this world to others. And that's something I think I can relate to as well, because the, some things are just, you just know that they're right, but you don't know why. And you just know how something is going to work out, but you can't point to actually physical evidence. So yes, the introverted intuiting types are oriented to towards psychic reality and the contents of their unconscious. These images are complex. They may not be straightforward. The people with NI high in their type code tend to think in images as well, so quite visual learners perhaps. And then he d goes on to describe the behavior as a unique ability to take a complex problem, move it into their virtual world, rearrange and study it. That gives them an uncanny ability to simplify the complex ideas. He also says they can be quite stubborn because they believe that their version is going to be, and this is something that I think I hinted at the short that I published earlier where I said it's one of the potential pitfalls of someone using introverted intuiting is you think you're right and most of the time you are, but sometimes you're not. And then you have to try and activate your extroverted sensing and stay present in the situation and listen to whoever you're talking with. 
Dick goes on to describe how when they're stressed, they tend to become overly focused on extroverted sensing, which is the opposing function, right? So that can then look like you're obsessing with the experience in the here and now, you're obsessing about facts and you get really into the grip of details when usually take a deep breath and go back into your dominant and allow the flow of images to appear again. But if you get with like a terrier with a bone, that is a, usually a sign for you're stressed. And now we're going to go into one of my favorites, understanding yourself and others, an introduction to the personality type code. This is by Dr. Linda Behrens and actually Dario Nardi, Dr. Dario Nardi, also collaborated on this. And what I really love about this book is that it gives you the, the eight cognitive functions in the different positions. So we talked about how introverted intuiting is the dominant and the auxiliary for the NJ types. And this book gives you an introduction to all of the types and all of the functions where they have them in their hierarchy. I shouldn't call it a stack, but it's a, a topic for a different video. So Linda refers to introverted intuiting as foreseeing. And basically, it's also about conceptualizing, understanding complex patterns, synthesizing and symbolizing. It's very future oriented. And maybe I can read you her paragraph here. Introverted intuiting involves synthesizing the seemingly paradoxical or contradictory, which takes understanding to a new level. Using this process, we can have moments when completely new unimagined realizations come to us. A disengagement from interactions in the room occurs, followed by a sudden aha or that's it. The sense of the future and the realizations that come from introverted intuiting have a sureness and an imperative quality that seem to demand action and help us stay focused on fulfilling our vision or dream of how things will be in the future. Using this process, we might rely on a focal device or a symbolic action to predict, enlighten or transform. We could find ourselves laying out how the future will unfold based on unseen trends and telling signs. This process can involve working out complex concepts or systems of thinking or conceiving of symbolic or novel ways to understanding things that are universal. It can lead to creating transcendent experiences. So again, very much focused on the symbolic, the meaning, the broader sense of bringing things together. And I like how she says enlightenment. So to illustrate a quick difference, between what it looks like when you're using introverted intuiting as your dominant function and then um, lower down in the stack, I'm going to read you the INTJ and the ESFJ examples, okay? For an INTJ, this is what introverted intuiting sounds like when it's your primary process. For them, life seems to be a process of knowing a lot without any prior or direct experience. Usually they are right or are on to something. Often they have a strong sense of the future and what is likely to happen and easily strategize to avoid negative effects and accomplish goals. They want to have anticipated far in advance how a situation will likely play out and work backwards from there, often feeling certain that future changes will unfold in certain ways based on unseen trends or telling signs. When that sense of certainty is absent, it can be somewhat stressful for them and frequently they get impressions or, and premonitions of the unexpected. Conceiving of novel ways to understand the universals of life usually comes easily to them and they often gain profound realizations from meditative moments. They feel energized when dwelling on an image of future changes or a transformation and regularly use ideas and tools that transform how they and others understand existence. When they found an application area for their ability to work out complex concepts or systems of thinking in a new way, they can move to a level of creating transcendent experiences or sol solutions that transcend problems. And now for the ESFJ, introverted intuiting is in the seventh position. So if we're thinking about it as a stack, and again, like that's a, it's a different video because it's probably not a stack, but if you're going one through eight, so this introverted intuiting is definitely in an unconscious position and it might look like they can envision how an opportunity will play out and then ignore signs that it won't work out. The result will then disappoint them and under stress, they foresee disaster or nothing at all. Yet at times they delight in wise foresight and deeply appreciate symbolism. They may laugh at their own fears about the future. And this is for people with ESFJ preferences. And it would be the same for ESFJ. 
TJ. Okay, and now moving on. This is again Dario Nardi, excuse me for the focus. Uh, it's called The Magic Diamond, Jung's Eight Paths for Self-Coaching. And as the title suggests, you will find ideas and suggestions here, how to get out of one-sidedness and move into using your functions with more insight and with more intention. He calls introverted intuiting keen foreseeing. And I want to read the description first. Keen foreseeing can enter a brief trance to answer problems, focus on what will happen next, use the entire brain to consider the future, manage mental processes and aware of where they are in an open-ended task, use physical actions to focus the mind, may over rely on the unconscious. Like we said before, you have a bunch of ideas and a bunch of thoughts and a bunch of images, but unless you find a way to ground them in reality you're what we might call away with the fairies and building sand castles which is great and fun and for a balanced approach you want to have a bit of both here's what dario says the pitfalls of one-sided keen foreseeing could be that you find you can't stop thinking to relax you experience a hypertense focus while mulling over a problem until you get a solution, which might just take a few more minutes or it might take years. You keep envisioning a sp specific fantastical image or keep having a particularly scary dream. You follow a system for thinking that is perceived by others as strange or inscrutable. This system might be perfectly valid in some other culture or era, but you may feel compelled to reintroduce it. You may overly focus on self-development workshops and activities to the expense of practical daily needs. Hashtag feeling attacked. You overestimate your own development and consciousness. You may be aware of your potential or imagine being a certain way and still need to put in the actual work. Again, ouch. You create fantasies and pursue a vision of how things could be regardless of facts on the ground, major obstacles and practical costs. You live in your head, ungrounded and disconnected from your body and the environment, missing important sensory feedback. This can result in poor health past the point that others notice. You can be so focused on innovating or doing something in a novel way that you don't realize that you are really reinventing the wheel. You can get caught up in the aesthetic experience of everything. You're highly sensitive to everything and anything can make you feel whether pacifying or activating you. And you can get caught in the grip of a particularly powerful archetype such as an aggressive warrior, a vengeful trickster or a beguiling witch, losing common sense and self-awareness until you snap out of the trance. So this is what it can look like when you're overdoing it. This can mean you are in the grip of it, you are super stressed and you don't know how to get out of it. Or it can mean that this is your dominant and your preferred function and it's been helpful for you to address all your life's problems. But coming to a place when it no longer works, you then double down. And that's when you hit a wall. Right? In the words of Jung, he says, because intuition excludes the cooperation of sensation, it obtains either no knowledge at all, or at the best, a very inadequate awareness of the physical effects produced by the unconscious images. Accordingly, the images appear as though detached from the subject, as though existing in themselves without relation to the person. So, in other words, the, as Dario puts it, the person experiences physical issues but doesn't know why or doesn't understand where they come from. And then exercises to find your way out of it would be activating the other side of your intuition, so your extroverted intuition, which is about finding patterns and having ideas and letting yourself be in the process of coming up with other potential explanations for things. Or you go into your opposite, which would be extroverted sensing. And that is being in the moment, experiencing the moment interaction with interacting with what you can perceive with your five senses, not with the imagination, but with what you can actually 
hear, see, feel, smell, touch. And probably the greatest stretch would be to go into your introverted sensing, which Dario calls confronting your demons. And he he actually says the third provides the greatest stretch. Okay, This process, cautious protecting, heavily competes with keen foreseeing in every way. It can feel like a dangerous war between a prophetic oracle and a blockheaded conventionalist. Rather than trying to incorporate this process directly into your life, it's best to focus on using your gifts to ensure you cover the minimum practical basis that come naturally with cautious protecting, such as having a safe home. So one of the products of introverted sensing is stability, right? Introverted sensing is about doing things the way that they used to be done and being predictable and creating stable surroundings. So this might mean if you have, if you're over, if you find you're overusing your introverted intuition, for example, investing a lot of money in self-help workshops or in exploring ideas that you don't know if they have a practical application, use a budget, ask someone with introverted sensing preferences or even with extroverted sensing preferences to help you spitball some ideas and make sure that they choose the one that might have the most realistic application before you sink all your money into it. These can also be activities like having a certain routine, going to bed at a certain time, having a certain meal at a certain time. And I'm noticing the video is getting really long. But I also wanted to give you exercises. Let's see. Last but not least, from a different Dario Nardi book, The Eight Keys to Self-Leadership. Excuse the blur. He provides three basic and advanced exercises and I'm just going to give you one each. So from the introductory exercises, if you'd like to activate the introverted intuition, consider sitting down, clearing and quieting your mind. That would be the first step. Meditation, prayer, whatever you want to call it. And that can look like journaling. You don't have to sit with your eyes closed. You can focus on a flame. You can maybe even recite a mantra. But the idea is to open a channel to your unconscious. And then a basic exercise. If you have introverted intuiting, maybe in your a little higher up in your third function, if you have an SP in your type code, he says, bring together in one place all the images and symbols that attract your attention. You can use symbols, totems, archetypes, or other abstractions to stand for various conflicting perspectives, ways to be, or aspects of yourself. For example, when you were a child, what kind of symbols or Im images or animals were you drawn to? And then you can draw them, you can sketch them, you can look them up, you can make a little vision board about them. You can visualize people you know and admire, and the more an image holds your attention, the more you imagine it when it's not in front of you, the more powerful it is. You can even find new symbols within those symbols. And then if you already have introverted intuition quite high up, like I said, with the NJs, you can try and practice it by gaining insights for others. See if a friend needs an opinion or when they come and ask you for advice, listen to what your inner voice is telling you or maybe a question that they have and this is something actually i've heard dario um it's an example that he gave you might even imagine putting the the question in an envelope sending it back and then receiving the letter opening it and what does your subconscious respond to you you can reframe a situation when presented with conflicting perspectives withdraw from the situation for a moment quiet your mind use the basic techniques to receive insights from the unconscious. Often the answer won't be a solution per se, it's a meta perspective if it eliminates the conflict. So this is great for finding compromises and reframes. And then if someone makes a comment that's not well received, the sudden aha solution you get could be an alternative interpretation of what was said. Reframing may take hours or days at first, but with practice you can withdraw from the moment, return with the reframe in a new moment. A reframe is not a snappy comeback. A reframe changes the meaning of the entire situation. And then he has a bunch more, but you would have to get the book to get access to them. So I hope you enjoyed this very deep-ish dive into introverted intuiting. I'm happy to talk more about it. Let me know what you thought, if you have any questions, where it shows up for you in your type code. 
And at this point, I would also like to invite you. I'm doing research. It is my goal this year to speak with 100 people and having curiosity conversations, basically where we would talk for 15 minutes. I get to ask you questions. And then for the next 15 minutes, you get to ask me questions and I can coach you if you'd like. And we can talk about type. We can talk about work, life, relationships, all the things, and then apply the type lens if that might be helpful if you're experiencing any challenges. And you can go to my website, dorisfullgrabbercom slash offer and sign up and schedule your own session. So I hope you found it helpful. Again, happy to hear what you thought. See you again soon.